Don't be in a, in a race to finish something. Sometimes you've got to meditate on God's Word. Sometimes you read a chapter, and the next day you got to go back and reread it again. Prayer is our connection to omnipotence. That's why we need to pray. If people don't pray, if Christians don't pray, what is that saying? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, that, Lord, we can count on you, Lord God, whatever is going on, Lord Jesus. That's why, Lord God, it's not a mystery why we do put our trust in you. It's because you're so trustworthy and you've proven yourself over and over again. And we love you, Lord. Father, we continue to need you, and we need you now, Lord, as we're about to open up your word. Would you help us? Would you give us revelation? Would you speak to our hearts, oh God? We look to you, and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord one more praise offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, the children are going to get ready to go to... Their children's church, so you can start making your way there. They have a wonderful lesson prepared for, for you. Amen. Well, I want to just uh, speak to you what the Lord laid on my heart. You know, I was thinking about, boy, times pass and how a lot of things, well, everything is new, right? I was thinking about uh, the internet even. <laughs> when I used to, when I first got on the internet, it was, you had to wait quite a while to get on. And back then, AOL was the big player. And after a long while, you would get on, and sometimes you'd hear that little lady, that AOL voice say, goodbye. <laughs> but I, I didn't, I didn't want to leave. And you got kicked off, and you had to start the whole process again. So now we have new internet, and people are so, uh, you know, they don't want to wait 10 seconds. They say if you wait more than a certain amount of seconds, five seconds, people will move on from your website. So it's been quite a change in that. And I was thinking about this other thing. Nobody, well, hardly anybody here is going to remember this, but I remember when cars didn't have power steering. In fact, they didn't have power anything. You know, the power, we had power windows, though. But the, the, the steering wheel thing, I used to see my father, you needed to work out, like to park your car. It was like, <laughs> you ever have the steering, the power steering go on your car, anybody? Right? That's how it used to be. So then they're new and improved, everything is power now, power brakes, power windows, power steering, uh, portable phones. I, uh, you know, I used to have a job where I made a good amount of money, so when something new would come out, I bought my, I thought I was so cool, I had a portable phone, it was the size of a briefcase, and the phone used to sit on top or on the side, I used to walk down the street, I was so cool with my portable briefcase, and then it got even better, because they, they made it just a handset, like that with a big antenna. It was like those, you know, military walkie-talkies that you hear, and you were cool then. And then, of course, they got new and improved, and they came very tiny, but then tiny was no good, so now they're getting bigger. Who knows? You might be carrying around a briefcase soon with a phone on it. But we always think that bigger, that newer is better, right? If you have an iPhone 12, you were happy when you got it, but then the iPhone 13 came out. And I, I get a kick out of uh, the new phones because their come on in, in, in trying to get you to buy new ones is they give you less. I remember when they took out the earphone you know, port. Here's a new phone. By the way, no more earphone port. You have to buy ours for $150. <laughs> And we fall for it and we buy it because we want new. But new is not always better. And when it comes to God, it's not better at all. I want to talk to you about when the old is better than the new. One verse in Jeremiah 
chapter 6 that we're going to read, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. This is what it says in Jeremiah 6, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. So the history of the people of God has been always to go off the road. And here God is warning them for who knows how many times. And he's telling them, you're going to come to a crossroads. And when you get there, look around. And when you look around, here's what I want you to find. Find the old godly way and walk in that. Because everybody is looking for new ways. But like the people of old, a lot of people today are also looking for a new way. So what do we learn from this story? First of all, there are many crossroads in life. How many know that? There are many crossroads in life. And one of those uh, crossroads is uh, confusing because there's many voices. How many know there's many voices in life? And these voices try to tell you where to turn at the crossroads. They're trying to direct you at the crossroads of where to turn. So you need to be discerning on who you're listening to and what you're listening to. You have to know something called the, the word of God. Right? Because many people take at face value anything that anybody that has a name says. I was taught from early on, you know what? Check everything that anybody says with the word of God. And I welcome you to check anything that's said from this pulpit from the word of God. Because that's the only thing we're interested in. If it's here, we believe it. If it's not, you can have, well, don't have it. <laughs> don't have it. Amen? Because listening to the wrong voice will put you on the wrong path. There are many voices. There are also many different seasons in life. And you need to be able to be sober and alert enough to, to realize what's going on around you. Uh, there's different spiritual seasons. We just went through and still are kind of in one, right, where the pandemic hit and all the racial strife hit. That was a spiritual season. You know what happened? Then when people, Christians, weren't alert and sober, they got swept up into it and swept out. Right? Statistics show that about 30% of people that were going to church before the pandemic are gone. Not going to church anymore. What happened? They went to the crossroads and they turned the wrong way. They didn't look for the old godly way. They got lost. And we got to pray for them. Amen? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 3. Man of wisdom wrote this, Solomon, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. You have to know when it's time to plant. And you have to know when it's time to uproot. Sometimes you have to uproot some things that have been growing that don't need to be growing. How many say amen? You know, there's uh, any of you that have any patch of grass knows that what comes along with patches of grass is weeds. When I first uh, moved to Maryland, I had to learn what was a weed and what was a flower because some of them look kind of nice. And some of them look nice and they're very prickly, right? So, you know, I didn't know. I, I pull out the flower and leave the weed, you know. <laughs> but weeds are, are, are one of the ways that you know them is they'll grow anywhere. It's so easy to grow a weed. In fact, I could write a book on growing weeds. But growing flowers or something nice, that takes work, doesn't it? And when you put something nice, what happens? Right away, stuff that doesn't need to be there. So you need to be ready to do what? Uproot the thing so that it won't mess with the real good thing. Amen? Every shift in a spiritual season is a crossroads. 
And we need to look around and choose the right way to go. Here's another thing. If you want to be on the right, get to the right destination, you have to know which way to go at the crossroads. And if your goal is to get closer to God, there's only one road. There's no many roads. There's one road to go if you want to get closer to God. Jesus tells us about it in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way, for the many that choose that way. That's sobering. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only, only a few ever find it. You don't hear that too much, right? About a difficult road. We like to uh, talk about a very rosy way. Make it easy. Widen the gate. You can't do that. If you do that, you're fooling people. You're misleading people. You're making them take a wrong turn at the crossroads. You got to tell the truth. It's a narrow road. And you need the help of God to stand, stay on it. But it leads to life. How many say amen? It's the perfect way to reach God. It's the only way. So there are many crossroads in life, and we have to know which way to turn. Here's another truth. People take new roads thinking that God is doing a new thing. How many of you have heard that? God's doing a new thing. God does do new things. I thank God for that. He, he blows me away. I'm so with it because God does new things the fact that I'm here in Imesville, Maryland that's a new thing for a Brooklyn boy but God does new things within the old godly way he does new things within the old godly way listen to a verse that sometimes throws people off Isaiah 43 two verses 18 and 19 forget the former things do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. A lot of people uh, take ways that go uh, past this word and, and they use this verse. But let me tell you what the former things are that we're moving away from. Failures, disappointments, sin, the wrong way in life. That's what you're moving away from. Not God's way. And that's what you need to forget when you're seeking God. God's new thing is about making a new way to be restored to a relationship with him. That's the new way. That's the streams in the desert. Because if you haven't noticed, when we get away from God, good things do not happen. How many can testify to that? Three people can testify to that. The, West, the rest of you are trying to find out. If you really know, how many went the wrong way? How many honest people do we have in this building? Uh, every hand should be up because everybody goes the wrong way. It's our default position. It's just the way we go. For me to go the wrong way, I don't have to do a thing. I will just auto, I'm on autopilot to do the wrong thing. To do the right thing, I need some power, the power of God himself to keep me on the very road that leads to life. The power of God keeps me, here's the crazy thing about it, it keeps me from myself. I'm my own worst enemy. How many know sometimes, that you, you know, in your past, okay, we're talking about your past, let's declare that at least. But you would do things that you know were going to cause trouble. And that didn't stop you. You knew it, right? This is not going to be good, but here I go. Some, with the crazed look in your eye. What in the world is that? We need to be saved from ourselves. That's what God does. Amen. That's, let me tell you what's new. Let me tell you what's new. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed. Not God's way. That's what we want. Our old stuff has passed. Behold, the new has come. Praise God. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. God does new things 
in the old godly way. Let me tell you something else. Truth does not get old. It does not get old. Truth is truth. And let me tell you the, the core reason why it doesn't get old. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the, the truth. Jesus is the truth. And he's everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting. The alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. No one comes to the Father except through me, he said. There is no expiration date on the truth. There is no new truth. Every truth that you need to know is right here in the word of God. And truth remains through the foolishness of humankind. As much as people want to change the truth or bend the truth, at the end of the day, truth will show itself. It will make itself known. Here's an example of the truth. You need to breathe to stay alive. Doesn't matter if you believe that. Doesn't matter if you like that fact. Doesn't matter if you're the president of the I Will Hold My Breath Club. If you do not breathe, you will die. I had a dear sister tell me yesterday that some years ago she was in a very tense meeting and she was so tense that she stopped breathing. And she had one of those smart watches, this is the truth, uh, which tell you everything except the time. Those frustrate me. I look for the time and it's telling me, you know, that uh, my brain's not working right. I already knew that. I need to know the time. <laughs> so she says she had stopped breathing. It was so tense in the room. And the, she looked at her watch and it said, breathe. <laughs> True story. I don't know if that was God talking through her watch or what. <laughs> but even the watch knows that you need to breathe to leave. You can't change truth. Amen? If you walk off a cliff and you don't believe in gravity, guess what's going to happen? You're going to believe on the way down. <laughs> See, the new thing that God is doing is in people's hearts. How many say amen? amen? And God has made this amazing way to change us from the inside out. That's a miracle. Hebrews 10, 16. Look, look at the new way. This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. And we're in that time. I will put my laws in their hearts. And I will write them on their minds. On the heart and the mind. That's the life-changing way that God has made forevermore. Amen. So, there's crossroads. People take new roads that are not God's road. Thinking it's God is doing a new thing. The new thing that he's doing is in our hearts. So God calls us back to his way, his path. All throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New, people get away from God and God calls us back to. There's not something new that you go to. You have to go back to what he said. You know, the, 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 our model for the church is not what the uh, church growth people are saying. The model for the church is right here. God tells us what he accepts and what he doesn't accept. Let me read you the first part of verse 16 again. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Our history, the history of humankind, is that we might start with God, but we walk away from God. And God has laid a, 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 a track for us. He has laid a way for us to come back to him. Let's look at it, at what God has laid out for us. God still only receives worship in spirit and in truth. If you're not worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, guess what? You're singing a nice song, or you're making nice music, or you're putting on a good show, but you're not worshiping God because he's not receiving it. What does that mean, spirit and in truth? That means that your heart is engaged and know what you're doing. You know how many people are singing and they don't even believe in Christ? 
confessions afterwards. There are a number of singers in the last few years that were big on some stage with a big church or something that later confessed, we don't believe in Jesus. But they were singing up there, and it seemed like a good show. Of course, God wasn't receiving any of that. He know. Here's the thing. We can't get away with it. He knows our hearts. He sees right through us. So you want to worship God. If it's not coming from here, I hope you, at least you can sing. The Bible says make a joyful noise, but it better be coming from your heart. Amen? Amen. Job 4, 23 and 24 says this. John, sorry, John 24. John 4, 23 and 24. Yet a time is coming, Jesus speaking, and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. He's looking for those worshipers. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you know what in spirit is? It's past your brain. It's a spiritual realm. Many of you were worshiping the Lord uh, before you were in the spirit realm. You were worshiping God where he lives. God is a spirit and his presence is here. Amen. God still desires obedience instead of sacrifice. Uh, you can do whatever you want or start funds or run around and do things, but if you don't obey the word of God, then you're not getting anywhere. First Samuel 15, 22, Saul got in trouble right away. King Saul, he lost his uh, uh, kingship for his family because he disobeyed. And Samuel said, to Saul, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. You know, uh, I, we, we, we had a little uh, uh, a, a dinner for the people who help us in the church. We just wanted to say thank you. And we were talking about serving the Lord and how important it is and why, why it is we serve. But one of the dangers, and it, it really, when, you, when God changes your heart, one of the things you want to do is you want to love people, you want to serve people. Why? Because Jesus was a servant. He said, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. An amazing statement that he made. But the, the danger of that is that you can be serving but not living right. And thinking you're okay, well, at least I'm ushering in the church, or at least I'm doing this, or I'm working on that project. You, there's no deals. This is not let's make a deal. God would prefer that you obey him. Out of that obedience, you will wind up doing something because love, the love of God needs to be, it needs an outlet for expression. That's what service is all about. It, it's not all, I, you know, it's not out of guilt. It's that there's so much in you, you have to bless somebody else with it. That's the love of God. But you can't make a deal and just do things when your heart is not right with God. How many say amen? God still upholds his word. There's no new word. The word is it. How many say amen? This is the authoritative word of God. Finito punto se acabo. That's all we have, and that's all we need. What God has said, he has said it, and it will stand forevermore. 1 Peter 1, starting verse 24, For all people, people are like grass, even those that think that they're important. All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. I love flowers. But one of the things I don't like about them is they, they die quickly. You know, my, my wife, if I want, one way that she receives love is she loves roses. So when I get in trouble, I mean, when I want to bless her, <laughs> I buy her roses and it brings a big smile to her face, maybe even some tears. But, you know, you put that little powder so that they'll last at least a few days. But flowers die. Even when they're planted, they die. And the Bible says that the people who have some glory, 
They're like the flowers of the field. The, the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So people that are saying, and they are saying it, that the word of God is irrelevant for today. Oh, yes. Christians, some, or they call themselves, anyway. They're saying that the word God has moved on. This was just for then. Right? Obviously, they don't read their word because they're a flower that's going to die soon. Right? But the word of God outlives every loud mouth who says anything against the word of God. Amen? I love the word of God. I love the word of God. As a matter of fact, life is cycles. You know, when you read the word of God and you see what's going on today, it's not new. Nothing's new. It happened already. People made those mistakes. It's just that since they don't read, they don't learn from anything. They don't learn from the mistakes. They're making the same ones and losing their lives at it. That's why we need to tell people the truth. How many say amen? Amen. Some of you folks got to bring some of your neighbors for that fall fest. They're going to hear the gospel. You know, we got to care about the lost, right? This is serious, serious business. We're talking about eternity. Oh, my goodness. So God still upholds his word. Listen to this. God still calls sin, sin. Hello. He still calls sin, sin. Listen to this and tell me if it doesn't remind you of what we're going through today. Isaiah 5.20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's exactly what's going on today. The good is called evil. And the evil is called good. If you do something wrong, if you're heading the wrong way, and trying to indoctrinate our children, and if they go the wrong way, yes, we'll support you as you destroy yourself. Yes, we'll cheer you on. You know what? The mistake that I think we make as Christians, because we have the word. And by the way, the, the word does not fit into the morality of the world. They can change their morality because they have no foundation. So that's what they do, because they want to feel good about what they're doing, so they have to change the morality. But we have to hold a standard. We have to say the truth if we love people. And that's the mistake that Christians make. How are we supposed to say truth? Does anybody know how we're supposed to say it? That's right. Do we always do that? When anybody who's living a wayward lifestyle, all sorts of people have asked me, well, what's your church like? Do you accept this or that or this? And I say, our doors are open to everybody. Everybody can come in here, but everybody's going to hear the truth. We want you to come. We want to love on you, but because we love you, we will tell you the truth. And if they're asking me about their particular thing, I will tell them what the Word of God says. And he tells it. Why? Because he loves us. Right? All sorts of things pop into this head of ahead of ours as what's good and what's... Listen, you remember you before you were saved? How crazy were you? How crazy were you? I heard stories about you. I mean, nuts, right? But God changed all that. So we, we understand. We were there. We were on that side of the fence, Right? So what do we have to do in love? Tell somebody, hey, look, I lo- don't you tell your children the truth because you love them? You don't say, oh, you know what? I know you love fire. God, God just 
created you with this love for fire. So go ahead, little Johnny, five years old. Go play with those matches in our neighbor's house. <laughs> Don't do it here. <laughs> no, we have to tell the truth in love. Amen? Timmy, if you'd come. So listen to this. It's not that complicated. God is calling us back to the basics of the faith. Basics. You know, people are running around looking for new things in God and getting off track. How about concentrating on the basics of faith? Have you mastered that yet? Have you got that under your belt, the very basics of our faith? You know, I remember uh, when uh, my son Timmy, who plays the keyboard, he's a bass player first, believe it or not. He plays the bass really well, but he started off as a drummer, so he plays the drums too. But when we moved to Maryland, we lived in an apartment for four years. And how many know, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. You do not bring drums into an apartment, not if you want to keep your life. Your neighbors will kill you. <laughs> So we had to put them in storage, and he kept asking me, Dad, when can we take out the drums? Uh, yeah, we can't, son. We're living in an apartment. He said, well, teach me the bass. And, you know, a big smile came on my face because that was my ultimate goal. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't read music, so I taught him a song on the bass. He pricked it up real quick. But the next day, he tells me, Dad, teach me how to slap. And slapping on the bass is a technique that, you know, people have been playing a long time. They get it. It's complicated, but it's very rhythmic and it's awesome. And I said, son, son, you just learned one song and you want to slap already? I'm going to slap you in a minute. <laughs> so you, you have to I mean, let, let's handle what we have. Can we handle what we have? I remember, you know, when my mom, I was a very finicky eater, so when she would give me, she would cook especially for me. She said, what would you like today? I'm not spoiled. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I would tell her, and she would make it, or if she would give me, I, I mean, I'm a cookie monster. If she would buy cookies for me, and she'd put, like, three on the plate. And before I'm, I, I eat one, I'm asking her for more, and what would she say? Finish what's on your plate first. Finish what's on your plate. So Christians, you got the basics down? Have you forgiven that person who wronged you, even though they didn't apologize? Can you love somebody that's not so lovely? You got that down? Finish what's on your plate. The basics of the faith. Let me read to you a passage of Scripture, because that's what God is looking for. You know, we want to head off to new things. Hey, hey, time out. Slow down. We got a lot, to, a, a long way to go before we can move on to anything. You know when we're going to move on? In heaven. Oh, we're going to go turbo, turbo speed in heaven. But here, we got to handle what God has given us. Listen to Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. What can we bring to the Lord? Should we bring him burnt offerings? Should we bow before God most high with offerings of yearly calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? No, O oh people. The Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you. Do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. Three things. How about that? Let's concentrate on these three things for the next 50 years. How about do what is right? Do you do what is right all the time? Some of the time? Most of the time? Never. <laughs> Never. Salvation is coming to that brother soon. <laughs> Very soon. Do what is right. How about loving mercy? 
How many here love mercy? Raise your hand if you love mercy. If you love mercy, raise your hand. For yourself. That's not what it's talking about. You love mercy for somebody else? If you see somebody doing something you don't like, you love mercy for them, you want God to punish them. I have said this before, but it's just so true. When that person speeds by you on the highway, what are you thinking? Come on. Where is that? Where is that state trooper? The nasty one, the real nasty one that wears his hat and the little strap is on the back of, a, you know, a ridge on his head. They all have ridges on their head for that little hook thing. And the hat is down. You know in tr they're, you're in trouble when they get out of the car. That's the guy I want to stop. That guy who just passed me at 90 miles an hour. Hey, uh, hey, Pastor, you remember you were going 90 miles an hour yesterday because you were in a hurry? Yeah, but, you know, I love mercy. I love mercy. But get that guy. Do right. Love mercy for others. And walk humbly before our God. The basics of the faith. There's no new fads. God's not looking for new ways to do services and new ways to trick people into coming to church. Why trick people? God is awesome. We don't have to beg anybody. Tell them the truth. They either accept it or reject it. I'm not going to trick anybody or water down the truth so that people will come. Water down truth is not good. New fads in worship, he only receives worship one way. One of the new things I heard now, oh, yeah, we, we, we got to get together. We're going to vibe. We're going to vibe. They're talking about worship music. You could be vibing, but you're not worshiping. Worship is not a vibe. You better reverence God when you come before his throne of grace and know what you're doing. We're not vibing. We're not cool. We're worshiping the God of all creation, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Fads in the way we serve God. Someone told me that God is doing something new and that the church will be no more. I wonder where they got that from. God is always calling us back. Remember the prodigal son? You always have to come back. We don't need to venture any farther than what God has given us. By the way, this is far. There's so much in here you will never get even to the middle of all the mysteries of God. Don't look out there. There's nothing out there that God has said. We need to come back to what he has already said. And we have to ask for God to help us to live with what already he has said. Amen. There is no new road. The old road is the road. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your love and your patience with us, oh God. Father, teach us, Lord Jesus, to stay on the path that leads to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, oh God. God, teach us, oh Father, to look around, Lord God, but Lord, to discern, because we're in your word, what's the right way to go. Lord Jesus, we need you, Father. Otherwise, we would get lost. But thank you, Lord, that your word says that you would lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. You would counsel us and watch over us. That's what your word says. So, God, I ask that you do that for us in Jesus' name with our heads bowed and eyes closed. If there's someone here, maybe you've wandered off the road, and God is speaking to you here today, and you want to come back. All you have to do is ask God, help me. I, I want to come back just like the prodigal. Or maybe you never received Christ Jesus in your heart and God is speaking to you. Those of you that are watching online at home, maybe God is speaking to you. Have you wandered from the faith? Did you stop gathering with the believers? Did something happen? Or maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. If that's you, I want you here and also those that are at home. If that's you and you want to ask God to help you today to get on the path, if you would just raise your hand, let me know who you are. I'd love to pray a prayer with you. 
Is there anybody here who wants to pray that prayer? I'd love to pray it with you. Amen. I'm going to trust there's someone at home who God is touching. God is speaking to your heart. And if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your love for me. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross, and I believe that you rose again. Today I recognize that I'm a sinner. I've done a lot of things wrong, and I'm asking you to forgive me and wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Today I give you my heart and my life in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for anyone, Lord, who has prayed that prayer with me. Father, you're right there with them. Lord, according to your word, they are now in the family of God. I pray that you would lead them and guide them from here, oh God. Show them the way. Get them on the path, oh Lord God, the only path that leads to you. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we all stand and give the Lord a praise offering for his word?